tonight. Let us open in a word of prayer so we can get into Bible study tonight. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you for allowing us just to be here that we can have another Bible study. I pray now, dear God, that we might enjoy ourselves in the word and have a wonderful time with you now. In Jesus' name we pray. So we've been looking at this series, How Does God Speak to Us? And we have looked at part one, and we have looked at part two, and now we're down to the third part, How Does God Speak to Us? And so we're going to get right down into the meat of the matter today, and we are going to look at God speaking through others to us. So it is very clear that God uses others to speak to us, other people, you know, God sends other people to talk to us. And when we check the word of God, we realize that it is evident from Genesis to Revelation. You check the Bible and you see God sending the prophet to go talk to this person and go talk to that person. And then in Revelation, the whole book of Revelation is somebody talking to us. Because <laughs> God gave the vision to John, the revelator, and he's telling us. So, from Genesis to Revelation, you see God using people to talk to us, right? He will send others to warn us, to inform us, to direct us, and even to rebuke us. He'll send persons to do that, right? But there's just one major problem with that, when God uses people. Now, this is it. People lie. <laughs> no, the problem is not with God and who he sends. Because when he sends real people of God to tell you something, they are of God and they are telling you what God said to you. But the thing is, the people down at the bottom there that lie, those people are persons who pretend God has told them something. And so you got to be careful of those persons because people lie. And trust me, they will lie from the pulpit. <laughs> so that means even pastors lie. Some people don't believe that pastors lie. Take it from me, pastors lie. <laughs> no, people tend to believe others when the word God is attached to anything. So that's the best lie. I've, I've seen people do it all the time. You want to tell a good lie, just say, God said. <laughs> And once you say God said, people go, oh, and they listen to you. Or if they tell a lie and say, God's honest truth, you know? <laughs> so once God is attached to it, people tend to believe it. But trust me, they are lying some of the time. If we are not sure if God sent someone to us, just ask God. It's simple. I don't know why people won't ask God this question. God, did you send Carol to tell me that? I just want to know. <laughs> right? Just ask the question. Believe me, if he sent you a message with someone and you ask him to confirm it, he will. God will confirm it. He will make sure you get your confirmation. Right? God wants you to know and understand what he is saying. So if, he takes, if it takes confirmation for that to happen, he will send it. You know, my grandmother told my mother a story which she told me, which is a very good story. She always said to me, before you believe everything that somebody says to you that somebody says, confirm it. And she always says to me, especially if you're dealing with money. <laughs> and then she told me the story. So the story goes that this man was taking care of his family, nice father, nice husband, doing good. And so he would always get a little bit of his paycheck and tuck it under the mattress. And he would say to his wife, this is for a rainy day. And he would tuck more money under the mattress, this is for a rainy day. And he would tuck some more, this is for a rainy day. So one day when he was showing the wife, this is for a rainy day, somebody was passing by the window and went, oh, okay. <laughs> And when that man went to work, he came and he knocked on the door. The wife answered, said, yes, how can I help you? He said, your husband left something here for me. And she said, what? The money under the mattress. My name is Mr. Rainy Day. <laughs> and the wife said, oh, don't worry, I'll go get it. And so she went and gave the man all the money under the mattress. <laughs> Just because he said his name was Mr. Rainy Day. So listen, 
always confirm. So if God tells you something, he will confirm it himself. Or if you're not sure, you ask him and he will confirm it. So nobody's supposed to trick you <laughs> and say, God says and you do and you get in trouble. So the first example I want to show that people lie, and I took a story from the Bible with a man of God that lied to show you that it can come from the top, just to let you know. So we have a story here where the people of Israel were turning away from God. And what happened is God told a prophet, a real man of God, he says, I want you to go and tell them that I said this and this is this. And he says, okay. And God said, wait. Don't eat from them. Don't drink from them. Don't stop and talk to them. Walk a different way coming back. <laughs> That's what God said. I don't want you to mix up with anybody there. Come back to your side of the country. Now, there was another prophet in that country who really God should have spoke to. But what? He wasn't living a good life. So that's why God sent for the prophet out of town. Because this one now is not hearing from God because he had sin in his life. So God stopped talking to him. And so, this is where it picked up. That prophet wanted to hear what God said. Because now he, he's not in the scoop anymore. He doesn't know what's happening. So he find out that the prophet had already come and delivered the message and he doesn't know what's happening. So he went to his sons and said, listen, did you see the prophet? And they said, yeah, he went that way. He said, saddle my donkey. I got to catch him. <coughs> so this is where the story picks up. And they saddled, they had saddled the donkey for him. He mounted it and rode after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and asked, are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he says, I am he, replied. So the prophet said to him, showing that he was really a prophet of God, but he was now not hearing from God. He says, come home with me and eat. He wants to hear what's going on. So listen to what the man of God said. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I have been told by the word of the Lord you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. God told him that directly. Don't do anything. Listen to what I said. So God told him directly. Listen to what the old guy said to him. The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet. <laughs> As you are. <coughs> and he talked to him in the prophet words. He said, I didn't Angel said to me by the word of the Lord, <laughs> Bring him back with you to your house so that he might eat bread and drink water. All he wants to do is get the scoop, so he lied. And it says it in the Bible, but he was lying to him. So the man of God returned with him and ate and drank at his house. Now listen, God was upset with him, very, very upset. Because basically God is saying, you got direct instructions from me. And somebody else is going to come and tell you that I said something different. Are you crazy? Because it came by the way of somebody else. My word doesn't mean anything to you. Oh, so God, God was very upset back in those days. And it says, as he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him. <laughs> God wasn't playing this. Right? And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey, because he got a donkey to go home, and the lion was standing beside it. So you had the man, and you had the donkey standing beside the body, and the lion standing beside the body. It was so miraculous to people, because they were passing, and they saw the lion, they wanted to run, but they were like, wait a minute, the lion isn't attacking anybody. And the lion isn't even attacking the donkey. The lion just sat beside the body and looked at the man that he killed and the donkey was looking at the man that was dead too. And so they went and told the old prophet and said, this must be some God thing. You better go get that body because we ain't going out there. And so the lion, the lion prophet went and collected the body and buried him with his people. And that's how he got buried. So listen, not because people say, God sent me, means they're telling the truth. They lie. And so, not because a pastor said, God said to buy me a jet. <laughs> Means that's right. You get what I'm saying to you? Don't follow them. Not everything that they say is true. If it's of God, he will confirm it. 
then we want to look at in Exodus chapter 4, right? We realize too that God now will really send people to people, but this is where God is sending someone to in give them information. He's just giving information. And so I'm going to be using a little bit of the story of the children of Israel because, listen, Moses played an important part and he showed a lot of what happened um, with some of the things I want to use. So we find out here now that God said to Moses already, listen, I want you to get the children of Israel out and, you know, we're going to get them out of Egypt and all of that. And he's like, okay, saw the burning bush and all of that. But after that, God basically said, listen, go tell them what I said. Inform them. So, this is where we pick up. And the Lord, and the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. There is brother. He hasn't seen him for years. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say. And also about the signs he commanded him to perform. Of course, when Aaron heard all of this, he's like, oh, this is big. So Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people and they believed. So now God used Moses and Aaron to tell the elders and the people of Israel, God's going to deliver you. So now they know what's happening. So they were informed. And after they were informed, it says, And when they heard the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. So they knew what was happening and they had information. Now let me tell you something. God did not have to tell the children of Israel what his plans were. But he informed them through Moses. Right? So this is what you get to find out now. That sometimes God will use people just to tell you stuff. And this is what happened. God just used Moses and Aaron to tell them what was going to happen. Because look at this. They now have information the Egyptians don't have. They know they're going home, but the Egyptians don't know they're going home. So God just informed them of what is happening. Now, one of the things about this one, listen, God will tell you one thing, and you see the party that God didn't tell will be an obstacle. <laughs> They'll fight you sometime. So God will tell, listen, let me give you an experience. When you are a pastor, not half the time the church don't listen to what you say if you say this is what God wants you to do and everybody looks at you like, really now, pastor? <laughs> Think about that. So sometimes God tells me something as a pastor and the rest of the church or the council don't have the information yet. But that don't mean I still have to, I still have to tell them what's happening and when I tell them what's happening, just like the Egyptians, they're like, really? I don't think so. <laughs> so this is it. God will inform, use people to inform other persons about stuff that is happening. So that's another way God speaks. Then we go down further and we realize, right, that now that he knew that the children of Israel were going to set free, Moses had to know, talk to who? Pharaoh. They have to talk to Pharaoh. Now this is the thing. When you read the story, Moses and Aaron eventually informed Pharaoh. They didn't warn him. They just informed him and said, listen, God says let the people go so they might go and worship. That's all they said to him, you know. And he's like, your God said to you, you know who I am? I'm Pharaoh. You crazy? And so it reached the stage where they throw down the, you know, the things and the snakes and you know, Abraham's, uh, Moses' rod ate all the different rods, the snakes of the other persons. All of that happened. No warning was given yet. Until we reach here, we are now, instead of just informing Pharaoh, they give him a warning of what's going to happen. So now we see God using somebody to warn somebody of something that hasn't happened yet, that's, that's going to happen, and this is what he said to him. He said, then say to him, the Lord God of Hebrews has sent me to say to you, let my people go so they may worship me in the wilderness. Then he continued, 
but until now <laughs> you have not what listened so he's been talking to him then he says this is what the Lord says by this you will know that I am the Lord with the staff that is in my hand I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood the fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink the Egyptians will not be able to drink this water so now they're like yeah go ahead you're gonna what strike it with your and it's gonna turn into blood <laughs> go ahead buddy do your best shot that's what Pharaoh probably said and of course what happened the water was turned to blood after that every time after that he got a warning this is what's gonna happen if you don't let the people go and he didn't and so you know how the story went so now we see God can speak to someone to inform us we see that God can speak to somebody to warn us. Now we see God sending instructions to people. Direct and specific instructions that you must follow word for word. Now I could not put the instructions up there. We'll be reading all night. <laughs> so I had to narrow it down. What happened, this was at the ending part of the situation now. Where God told his people, he told uh, Moses and Aaron, listen. Tell the people, kill this, port, kill this, the firstborn. We're going to call it the Passover. Put the blood over the doorpost because the dead angel is going to pass through. If they don't do exactly what I said, then they're going to feel it. Make sure you do what I said. So everybody did everything that God told them to do. So here we go. This is where we pick up now. So it says, obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe his ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. So they didn't talk to God for themselves. God sent instructions to Moses and Aaron. And so sometimes somebody might come and tell you, say, this is what you need to do because God said you must do this. And some people are like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> well, if they didn't follow Moses and Aaron, look what happened. It says, at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon. Oh, that's hard. You're in prison, and you're going to get a call. Well, they didn't have a cell phone that time. But somebody came and said, hey, Mario, your son's dead. What? Yeah, you're firstborn. <laughs> you're in prison. Right? So from the firstborn from Pharaoh to the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. That means the animals felt it. The little kitty cat, the little doggy, the little deer. <laughs> all the firstborns, all the firstborns went that they had as pets and all of that. And listen, it says, Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night. And there was a loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house with some, without someone dead. Can you imagine that every household had death at the same time? That's hard. But this is what happened when God sends instructions and people fail to believe it and listen it. So God will speak to us through someone and give us specific instructions. And sometimes people won't listen. And as my grandma always said, you got to feel to learn. God also will rebuke persons, right? Now we move from the situation where we have it with Moses and Aaron. And we jump over to wonderful King David. Don't you love David? He was such a man of God. Oh, David. But listen, the wonderful man of God, David, just to cut the story short, stole somebody else's wife mm -hmm. <laughs> and made his wife his own while the man was at war. Mm -hmm. And then when he took the wife, 
the wife, the lady found out she was pregnant, she told the king. And David decided, okay, bring the man from war, brought the man from war, and then tried to get the man to go into his wife. The man would not, because he says, how can I do that when everybody is out here fighting? So David was like, uh-oh, they're going to find out what I did. So David sent him with a letter back to his army, and they said, you know, when you go out there and you're going to fight, put him at the front, and then when you reach out to the front, just stop and let him one go out there so he dies. <laughs> That's what David did. Yeah, I'm not lying. So David or organized the man's death. He was a murderer, right? And then now David comes and he's like, oh, Bathsheba, oh, your husband died in battle. I shall take you as one of my wives now. And you shall become a, a queen in the kingdom. So all the people are looking at King David like, oh, what a king. Oh, can you imagine that? Oh, man, this man died in battle and the king has now taken his wife and his unborn baby to raise as is. How could we have a better king than that? What a wonderful king. Oh, but he was lying. <laughs> he was a terrible guy. So this is where the story picks up. God sent the prophet, Nathan, the man of God, to David to confront him about his sin because he was living high and mighty and thought nobody saw what he did but God saw. And so this is what happened. This is what the Lord says. Because of what you have done, I will cause your own household to rebel against you. There's going to be war in your house forever. Listen, David was a great king but he always war in his house. <laughs> It was like World War I, II, and three in his house, right? And it says, I will give your wives to another man. Listen to this. Before your very eyes. And listen what happens. And he will go to bed with them in where? Public view. You did it secretly, but I will make this happen to you openly. In the sight of who? All Israel. Everybody going to know that people took your wives. And that sounds like, oh, sure that really happened? Well, he had daughters by different wives. He had sons by different wives. But they were all related. But one of the sons saw one of the daughters. And I, Ooh, my sister. Oh, I don't care. She's my sister. And so she wouldn't go with him. And so he took it forcibly. Oh. Yep, that's what he did to his own sister. And then after he did that, he looked at her and he said, Ah, you are not worthy to be in front of me. And chased her out of the room. Can you imagine that? Assault the woman and then did that. So she went and told her other brother who they both shared the same mother. And he's like, I got you, sis. Don't worry about that. So he kept her dinner. <laughs> when they're all sitting at the dinner, all the other brothers and sisters sitting at the dinner, he's there and he looks across from his other brother and they're all celebrating. He draws out his sword, jump across the table and punches it right in his chest <laughs> and kills his brother. <laughs> Just like that. I'm talking about the throne. This is the royal family back then. And so he ran away. Eventually, David and him fixed it up and patched it together. He's back now in the kingdom. But then this brother says, this son says, his name is Absalom. I think my daddy is weak. They need a new king. Remember, he just accepted him back in the kingdom. And so he makes a conspiracy to take over from his father. The great mighty David was weak and wasn't paying attention. And so Absalom got the people to change to him. And now David was going to be killed and he had to run from his own house. Can you imagine that? So David was running from his own house. And while he was running from his own house, Absalom, the wives that didn't get to go with David, Absalom took all of them, pitched a big tent on the roof, <laughs> so that all Israel could see, and did what he wanted to do with all of them in front of everybody, just like what the Bible said. His own son did that. So, wow. Everybody thought David got off scotch-free. He did not get off scotch-free. This is what happened to him. But the prophet was not finished, in case you thought he was finished rebuking him. So David is like, whoa, this is a lot. That's what's going to happen to me. Then David confesses to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, yes, you have. But the Lord has forgiven you. 
and you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, because you have shown utter contempt for the word of the Lord by doing this, your child will die. Mm. All of that, what he did to cover up the baby, God took the baby. So he was there. And so this shows that if it is of God, all of this must come to pass. David prayed. David fasted. He didn't eat. He threw ashes on his head. He did everything. Baby still died. They had all the doctors in there, everything. They couldn't stop the baby. Baby just died anyway. Just like what the man of God said. So we have learned and we have found out that if God sends somebody to you and he's telling you what has happened, it must come to pass if it is from God. Because God can't be wrong at any point in time. And so, it wouldn't be a Bible study without a story. <laughs> and so I want to tell you about the marriage proposal. <laughs> and so, who I mean, who was I going to get married to? Your mother. <laughs> so what happened here, Michaela and I were about to get married. It was probably about a month before we were going to get married. No, this is just a picture of the internet. This is not me. <laughs> we were just about to get married, and it was like a month before the marriage. Now, what had happened, I had contacted some persons, my brother and some other close persons to me, and I said, Pray with me. If Michaela is not the woman that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, ask God to just end it. He doesn't have to check in with me. I don't care by what means. If anybody cheats or if we don't get along, just end it. If she's not the right one, just end it. They're like, that's a crazy prayer. No, you see me? When I love, I go in all the way. So I can't bother with the, all these problems. If it's not her, just tell God to end it. So, okay. Everybody praying, everybody praying, everybody praying. Month from the marriage. Did you hear anything? No, did you? No, did you? I didn't hear anything. Woo! So it's a go. We're getting married. I'm all happy and getting all, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to get married. I'm going to get married. Then I get a call. And I get this call. Now, this lady that called me, was a friend of mine. I've known her for years, you know. But she was older than me. She was like eight years older than me. But we were in friends for a long time. Now, one time she had told me that she liked me. But I'm like, hey, you know, I don't see you in that way, you know. So let's leave it alone and stuff. She's like, oh yeah, we'll just stay friends. That's all that we've been friends. Keep it at that. Well, she called me on the phone. I got a word from the Lord for you. What is it? It's about your marriage. Ooh, my, my heart <coughs> left my chest, went down to my foot. Because <laughs> I didn't tell this woman anything that anybody was praying. So getting a call like this, you know what I'm thinking? Oh my gosh, she's not the one. Oh Lord. And I start feeling a pain in here that I never felt before. <laughs> and I was like, oh. So I said, Can, tell me what God said. She says, I can't talk to you over the phone. I have to talk to you face to face. I went, oh Lord. <laughs> so I go and I meet up with her. And I'm scared. And I'm like, what did God tell you? Well, I'm really scared. Because I'm about to lose the woman I love. But what did God tell you? She says, I've been talking with God. And I've been hearing from God. And I'm like, yes, yes. What did he say? He says, you're rushing into things, and this is not the woman you should marry. Oh, I'm telling you, it left my feet now, and it's running away. The heart <laughs> is going away. And I'm like, oh, he said that? And she said, yes. He told me there is someone else. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm listening. It's like, you need someone more mature. <laughs> oh? At that time, though, I see the heart coming back. <laughs> I'm like, really? But you are like who? Someone like, like me. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Everything just came right up back into my chest. I felt good. So I'm like, I'm saying God says you should wait because there is someone else here for you and you're going away in the wrong direction. Uh, by this time now, she's doing her talking with God and all that. I was okay. Heart was back in the chest. I felt good now. And I looked at her and I said, Okay, 
So basically what you're telling me, God said I should marry you. <laughs> I didn't say this is coming from God. I didn't tell you what God. this is God, you know. And I, I said, okay, let me tell you something. If this is the way your marriage proposal is, let me tell you this. I am going to listen to God. And until he tells me different, the wedding is still on. Bye. <laughs> and I left her. Left her standing there with her marriage proposal that came from so-called God. <laughs> this year will be 18 years. <laughs> so you see, people lie. And listen, when she told me this, do you know where we met? At church. <laughs> so this is on the church property, right behind the church, under the cross. I never forgot that. <laughs> when she was telling me what God said, people lie. So be careful. Now everything they say comes from God. So I just wanted to share that story with you. Alright, we move on to God using other people to talk to us. Now this is something I want to ask people. And people might not have saw this one coming. Now in our times that we live in, do you think God still uses angels to speak to us? What do you think? Who's going to answer that one? Do you think God uses angels? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. 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 And I mean, really, really talk to us. I'm not talking about, oh, Carol, you're such an angel. <laughs> <laughs> not talking that. I'm talking real angels. No. No. What I have learned is that God used angels in the Old Testament. And God used angels in the New Testament to speak to his people. Now, if he used angels in the Old, and he used angels in the New, what do I always say? Nobody remembers? You remember? If it's in both, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens in the Old Testament <coughs> that happens in the New Testament, it is important. So pay attention. Now, who gave man the authority to say God stopped using angels. Many things in the Bible I've heard people say it doesn't happen in our times again. And I said, really? When did it stop? Well, you know, there's no more Mary, there's no more Joseph. God used the angels then and Peter and all the apostles are gone, so there's no more need for the angel. And who gave you that instruction? Well, 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 well yeah, I'm waiting. They can't tell you what they have said it is no longer being done in the Bible. As far as I'm concerned, God does what he wants, it's his angels. So you can't tell me that he stopped using them. Because straight down to the book of Revelation, it was an angel that went and got John the Revelator. So why are you going to tell me he stopped using that? That's his business. And the prophecies after the book, when we're getting to the last day, a lot of it is done by who? Angels. That's after me and you expire. <laughs> So, he's using angels right down to the wire, right? I definitely believe with all my heart, God still speaks to humanity through angels. And I know some people are thinking this. Why do you believe that, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked, because I want to tell you why. <laughs> this is why. Hebrews 13, verse 1 to 2, 1 and 2. People don't even know this verse is in the Bible. And it is there. And so, I didn't even show the person this. But listen, once this is in the Bible, if you say, God, stop using angels, we got to now say, okay, this part, we need to cut it out. And remember I tell you, if you have to cut out something out of the Bible, it's wrong. Don't do it. Listen to this. It says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels, what? Without even realizing it. Now everybody that you meet for the first time is humans and you don't even know. Can you believe that? Have I having a bad day? The walking in the trail. Or Walmart with the cart. <laughs> And you're having a bad day and then somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, and whispers something nice and you strike up a conversation. It makes your day feel better. And then the person walks away. You never see them again. What, what's your name? Where did he go? Where did, I never got the name. 
angels unaware, strangers. You see, we have to understand that angels can come to us in any shape and form they want, right? We need to understand that. Sometimes we'll be talking, hanging out with them, and don't even know it. Can you imagine? When you check the Bible, they did it before. You have angels that have come to people in the Bible and they didn't know it was angels and they were in the form of men. So why would they stop right now? They can do this. This is what most people don't believe and realize, and which is a fact in the Bible. Angels can shapeshift. They can. People don't want to believe it, but let me tell you something. When an angel comes to somebody in their angelic form and they have their wings and all of that, you know the Bible tells you that they see them in the bright raiment and all of that. But then there are passages in the Bible where they came as men. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? When they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, they came in the form of men. And they walked right into the city, came to Lot and his family and said, Hey, get out of here. We're here to destroy the city. And Lot and his family were like, what? They're like, yep, we're angels, but we're in disguise and we're here to destroy the city. The men of the city saw them going into Lot's house and said, fresh meat. True story, you can read it. And they go and knock on the door and say, hey, some men came to see you. Send them out so we can have our way. And that's what they said. And Lot with his self said, No, 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 you can't get these men. These men are special. Send them out or we'll break the door down. And he says, Take my daughters who are virgins. Which is a lie because they were both married. <laughs> he was just a liar. And he says, Take my daughter. And they were like, We don't want your daughter. We want the men. And so they tried to break down the door and the angels pushed Lot back and struck the men with blindness. True story. So, now all the time they're coming in their angelic form, they're shapeshifters. And if you don't believe it, it started in the book of Genesis. Because guess what? When the devil came to Eve, he never came to her in his angelic, fallen angelic form. Because guess what? She would have said, whoa, buddy! You're not the one that used to come talk to us in the cool of the day. You look different. Because remember, God came in her presence in the cool of the day to talk with them. So if he came in that, it would be trouble. Which leads me to understand he took the form of the serpent. Now this is where most people miss this part. I just give you a little nugget here. It's that if man could not talk to animals back in those days, when that serpent spoke to Eve, she would have been, Oh, I didn't know you could talk! <laughs> <laughs> when can the animals talk? I didn't know that. So he took the form of something they had already been communicating with. I remember Adam named what? The animals. How the tiger know he's a tiger? How the dog know he's a dog? If he can't talk to him. I say, you dog, you tiger, you lion. <laughs> remember, he named them. So they were in communication and talking with each other. So when the serpent came to Eve, I said, listen, he don't want you to touch that. Because if you touch it, you're going to know too much. And Eve is now thinking, hey. Them animals were here when we got here. They were created before us. Probably they do know something more than us. You see how he used it now? Many people miss that in the creation. But just wanted to give you that nugget. So angels can shapeshift into what they want to. We, on the other hand, stuck in this one. If we want to shapeshift, we go to the gym. <laughs> That's how we shapeshift. That's all we can do, right? So God will use anything he wants to communicate with us. And so I just wanted to drop in angels there. Just a little drop in. One day we shall do the study of angels. It's a whole different ball game when we start doing that. We ain't getting there yet. So we're back to a different part now. We're finished with the angels. And we know that God can use anything he wants to communicate with you. If the best way to communicate with someone is to use the things around them, then he'll use it because he's God. Listen, he don't care. God will use circumstances or situations to get your attention, to speak to you, to discipline you, to point you in the right direction, to conform you to his will. He will use things all around you and don't say a word. 
and whatever he uses is speaking to you. Can you believe that? That's who God is. He is God and everything is subject to him. And so it is not beyond his scope to use anything to communicate with us. Anything he wants. So if he wants to use a chair, he'll use a chair to talk to you. Just like the man in the Bible that was talking with the donkey. God used a donkey to talk to him and he didn't even realize he was having a conversation with a donkey. God will use anything, any circumstance to communicate with us. Which leads me to this. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Jonah versus Mario. Ding, ding. Let the fight begin. <laughs> so we're about to compare and analyze and have a battle and we're going to see who won. Jonah versus Mario. Mario, Jonah in the fish belly, look at all that oh, man sitting on a turtle shell. <laughs> I love that picture. So here we go. We find that Jonah was given a message from the Lord. Listen to what the Lord said. Jonah 1 verse 1 and 2. This is the first thing in the book of Jonah. It says, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. That's what he says. You're going to go preach to them. Go tell them they better change or else. Right? Mario was in a church service sitting down and the Lord spoke to me in church. Right? I want you to go to Bible college. Okay, so right now, even Stephen both got what? Messages from God? And we'll see what, where it goes from here. So both persons got instructions from God, but both persons responded differently. Let's keep on going. But Jonah got up. This is verse 3. He didn't tarry. He went right. Verse 3. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Right? He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if he was to go that way, which God sent him to Nineveh, is about 500 miles that way. Going to Tarshish is about 2,000 miles in the opposite direction. <laughs> So God sent him 500 miles that way. He went 2,000 miles in the opposite direction. That's how far he was trying to run from God. Bad prophet. Let's look at the saint Mario. So Mario boarded a plane and went to the USA. Then got a ride to Maryland. Oh, what a wonderful guy. Looks like he's winning. Yes. So both servants of God. Both of them are servants of God. One running away from God. And one running toward God's calling. Oh, what an angel. Wow, Mario is such an angel. Wow. Right. <laughs> so far, Mario looks good. The obedient servant. Well, Jonah, shame on Jonah. Bad. The disobedient prophet of God. Bad Jonah. Look at that. Right? Now, we are going to look at Jonah's circumstances. God put Jonah in circumstances to clearly speak to him. Now let me tell you something about God. You see when he talked to Jonah in, in the first part of the book, and he said, go do this, never spoke to him again. Until he finished with him in circumstances. He never said a thing. Most people miss that in the book of Jonah. Listen, this is what happened. God sent a storm on the ship that he was in, and when he realized the storm was for him, he, instead he rather faced God, he decided he was going to face death, and he asked to be thrown overboard. He's like, listen, if this is because of me, don't worry. Get rid of me, the storm will leave you guys. Instead of facing my God, which I know can do me some serious harm, I'll just commit suicide and kill myself. Throw me overboard. And so the man threw him overboard. <laughs> But we all know what happened. God prepared a fish to swallow him and keep him alive. Just for him to realize and understand there is no escaping of God. God said not a word. So he went over in the water. 
I shall <laughs> Wait a minute. What is happening here? <laughs> and so it took Jonah three days to break. Three days in the fish belly. Three days to break. So after three days when Jonah broke, he prayed and repented. Still, he prayed and God didn't talk to him. <laughs> I'm just telling you, God put him in circumstance after circumstance. And then the worst circumstance of all, it was after this prayer that God ordered the fish to puke him out on land. In a prettier word or more terrible word, he barfed him up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what God did to him. So that was his final circumstance. Came out of the fish all covered in. <laughs> Look at that. And he's still alive. Right? So, it says, Then, this is verse 3, in chapter 3 now. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah. When? Second time. This is God just answering now. God never said a thing to him. He just gave him circumstances in his life. And said, listen, I don't have to talk to you. I can give you circumstances that will speak to you. And you understand what I want you to do. And conform you to my will. Now that he's conformed to the will, it says then God spoke to Jonah a second time. Very simple. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. That's what he said. Right? Jonah obeys and brings the word of God to Nineveh. So stubborn. You should have learned the first time. Let's go back to the, 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 the saint Mario. <laughs> Mario did what God asked. And eventually started Bible College. At Washington Bible College. That's what WBC stands for. Oh, what a wonderful young man. Yes. Singing his praises. But within the first semester. Washington Bible College announces. The school is closing down. And being taken over by Lancaster Bible College. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? I'm here. And the school is closing down? Uh oh. Let's see what Mario did. The dummy. <laughs> Mario tells God he refuses to go. I don't care what you say. I'm going. You carry me here. And then you're going to tell me school closed down. And you tell me this is where you want me to be. You said this is where I want you. And I'm here. And you're telling me about Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I don't even know what a Pennsylvania or a Lancaster is. I ain't going nowhere. So God sternly rebukes him. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. And so he obeys and he goes to Lancaster Bible College. Now, judges, who is dumber? Jonah trying to run from God. Or Mario refusing to go to Lancaster? Both. both you say it's a draw. Both. What do you yeah. Both. You say, everybody say it's a draw. <gasps> oh. <laughs> sure about that? What says you, Katie? I'm dumber. <laughs> yes! <laughs> For those who said Mario is dumber, you're correct. <laughs> and here is why. Now listen, God taught me this, so I can't pretend like I didn't learn it. And he showed me why I was dumber. And you shall see why. Let's go. Jonah's reason for running was because the Ninevites were wicked people. He had a good reason to run. Listen to this. The Ninevites were people that raided villages, killed people, killed babies, took people for slaves. They would put people's heads on stakes outside of their city to let people know, don't mess with us. And they would plunder villages and do awful things. They were terrible people. Right? So this is the reason why Jonah didn't want to go to them. So Jonah was running because he would rather God to judge them than to save them. And if God was going to save them, he would rather get somebody else to do it than him. Because these people have killed people that he knew. When you check history, they did that. So... Everybody was scared of the people in Nineveh because they were so terrible and wicked. No. Jonah's dumb mistake, so his reason for running, was good. I didn't say he was right being disobedient, but that wasn't dumb. His dumb mistake was trying to hide from God. Where are you going to go and hide from God on the earth? And he made the earth. That was his dumb mistake. Right? 
I'm going to show you that Mario dumb because as far as we see here, Jonah just made one dumb mistake. Let's go. Mario was dumber, and listen to this, because he learned the story of Jonah growing up. Uh-oh. I got the book. He taught the story in church for years. Uh-oh. I taught people. I taught Sunday school. I taught youth group. I taught the story of Jonah for years. You know how many times I said, oh, I would never be so dumb if God spoke to me one time. I wouldn't even question it. I would just go ahead and do what he says. I would never do that. This is me teaching. <laughs> Let me show you some more. Show you how dumb I was. This means Mario had a reference manual. Uh-uh. Jonah didn't have a reference manual. Mario had a reference manual of Jonah, not only Jonah, and of other accounts of people where God spoke to them using their circumstances. I had a book to guide me. Jonah didn't. Now let me tell you this. Anyone who has a reference manual to guide you before you make a mistake and still makes the mistake written down in the manual has to be done. <laughs> This is the truth. Has to be dumb. You get the book and the book says, don't do that. And I said, okay, I won't do that. Then I go ahead and do it. How did this? I miss this. And I was in the book and I taught the book. Well, guess what? I'm not the only dumb one. A lot of humanity in the same picture with me. I just wanted everybody to see that. Because we all got the book. And we're still making the same dumb mistakes. So many times when people want to think they are smarter than the people that were in the Bible back in the old days, hey, we ain't too smart either because we got the book and we still making the same mistake. So yeah, Mario was dumb. Now if I stop here, hands down I won the competition for dumbness. But I did something a little bit dumber. Let's keep on going. <laughs> now when the school announced it was closing, all I should have done was ask God, hey, you sent me here. What's happening? You told me to be here. And God would have said, yeah, I want it here for now. That doesn't mean I don't want you somewhere else. All I did was to do was to ask God what's happening, you know. Instead, the dummy went and told God off. I gave him a piece of my mind. No. Remember the prophet in the other one that went and ate bread and water and when he was coming back, what did God do? Lion him. <laughs> Sent a lion to eat him. Just because he ate with somebody. Me went and had a standoff with God and told God, Can you imagine that? And I'm still here. Oh, thank you. Right? Think for a minute. Jonah knew how powerful God was and tried to kill himself rather than facing God. I went back to my room and mouthed off to God. Now that's dumb. Hands down, that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Tell God to his face, you're wrong and I'm doing my own stuff and whatever. And I'm not talking like I'm saying it in my mind. I was saying it to him. I was mouthing off to God. That's dumb. That's dumb. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right? No, God could have taken me out for just running my mouth against him. He took out the other prophet for just eating food and not listening to him. Me went and told him a piece of my mind. He could have taken me out. So now you see, I'm at the class A of dumbness. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> see, that's what happened. We need to thank God for grace. We need to thank God we live in the time of grace. Because if this wasn't the time of grace and Jesus didn't come and die on the cross for us, and I did that, that would be a story in the Bible. <laughs> and that's the truth. So we need to understand God will speak through us through our situations. And to wrap up now, what have we learned today? We've learned... God will use others to warn you. He'll use others to rebuke you. He'll use others to inform you of stuff that is happening. Right? We have learned that God won't 
tell you one thing and then some send somebody else to tell you something completely different. God ain't bipolar, God ain't schizophrenic. <laughs> so if he says one thing and it sounds like somebody's come telling you something else, somebody has to be wrong. Find out from God. Right? We also learn that everyone sent by God, some people lie. That's the truth. And people will even lie from the pulpit to get what they want. Yes, God says I should not travel commercial anymore. I need a jet. God says I need a Corvette. The man of God must ride in style. People believe this stuff. And it's working. Now, when I used to hear those, I said nobody would believe it. But then I see them. They're flying jets and they're driving Corvettes. So it's working. <laughs> I don't know, but it works. Right? If you're not sure, ask God for clarity. So if somebody comes and tells you something, this is what God says, and you're not sure, it's not a problem to ask. Ask God. Say, God, did you send them? Tell me, because I don't want to make any mistakes now. Right? We also learn that God still speaks to us through angels. So when people say this angel thing is done away with, it's still even in the New Testament recorded that it's still being done. <clears throat> So God speaks to us using angels. We'll believe everything else these days. People believe there's life on the other planet, but they won't believe that there's angels all around us. Come on. Come on. Right? We also learn God will use circumstances to get our attention, to speak to us, or even rebuke us. He will put us into situations and don't utter a word. And he's still speaking to us. That's how powerful God is. And finally, if we realize God has spoken to us through a situation and we were disobedient like the dummy, <laughs> ask for forgiveness. And just move on. Because guess what? People have it to say, if you made a mistake with God, then it's over. No. I still got the picture. I said to God, hey, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, when he rebuked me, and listen, I found out where he really wanted me to go. I'm here, ain't I? Yeah, I'm here. So, if we realize he has spoken to us through a situation and we were disobedient, and we just ask for forgiveness, he'll still use us, and he'll still let us do what he wants us to do. And that's Bible study for tonight. That's awesome. Yeah, any questions? Yay! <laughs> Gotta ask, because my wife says, don't you end any more Bible studies without asking any questions. <laughs>